Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only. Coming to you with another episode of Fallout 4. Alright, and we left off. Uh, we discovered fire support is completely and utterly bugged now. Uh, there is no way around it. I can't force a fix. So, I um, am stuck. I'm stuck. I can't do anything about it. So... I'm just going to continue on with the, uh, <laughs> with the railroad as much as I can before, uh, problems start to arise. Well, I don't, but that's because I love the rain. But anyway, um, I did a whole bunch of reorganizing while I was here, did a whole bunch of ammo making and all of that, selling off junk as you can see by the fact that i'm at 302 now so yeah we are good for foreseeable future uh at least inventory wise but uh for now we're going to see what missions we can finish up and might as well finish up the boston bugle weather vane first before we go back to uh turn in memory interrupted so we're going to the boston bugle which is over here over here there we go <laughs> trying to force it onto the right fucking marker and uh we'll continue on for once i'm not recording with coffee i'm recording with sparkling water which is Slightly better than soda. <laughs> Just very slightly. But it's enough that I'm like, okay, I'm doing a little healthier thing. While still retaining my need for taste. Because I'm an asshole. <laughs> Man, it's so nice to turn in my chair without squeaks. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> I'm going to keep marveling about it for at least, at least a month. <laughs> All right. Well, here we are. Ah, uh, I heard the thunder and immediately thought it was a problem, but it's not. Let's go to the Boston Bugle then. Although I don't know what's going to be waiting for me inside. That might be a problem. <laughs> well, dead robots. That's an encouraging sign? Question mark? Uh, we'll find out one way or another. Dirty ashtray, because of course. And, well, I don't see the other robot. Oh, uh, that's why. Alrighty. Um. This area clear. Going up. Clear. And they'll be joining me soon. Maybe not. Approach and I. Oh hi there. Oh jeez. Oh boy. Okay. Well. Well, down you go. Alrighty. Good for that. I'll grab the typewriter. Soon. Eh, I could probably still use a coffee cup. I've collected a lot of ceramic, I'm sure, by this point. Alright. Yeah, they didn't follow me up because of how small of an up it actually was. Uh, no hot table? Ew. Moldy food. Gross. Well, I heard dog meat. So he must be right behind me. There we go. That's good. What about Kate? Kate is a no. Okay. I hoped. I hoped against hope. And I was wrong. Well, fuck me, I guess. Huh. There's a thing down here. I'm not sure what to think of. Beacon Hill. Huh. 
rather go down here just to see what loot I can get. If there is any loot to get, period. Turkey time. Uh. Oh, hey! There was some. Oh, hells to the yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Alright. This I can break down for some materials. This I can break down for some materials. That's good for me. Boston Bugle Article Terminator. Ooh, let's see what they were planning on printing. Pre-nuclear apocalypse. Um, first. Time? No. Yeah! No. Okay. Well, it's close. Um, one letter. Hmm. Really, the only one that I see that matches is seat. Well, seat and fell. But if it was seat, then the A would have matched. Which it only has one matching, so it's got to be fell. <laughs> Knew it. Alrighty. Copyright the Boston Bugle 2077. Articles may not be reprinted without permission of the editor in chief. Alrighty. Article 1. Case closed on crime boss Eddie Winter. Oh. By Mags Vicio. Vicio? Vicio? I don't fucking know how to pronounce that. Yeah. I've never seen the name. In a move that has shocked and angered the people of Massachusetts, the Boston Police Department announced last night that they have ceased all investigations into the actions of reputed organized crime boss Edward Eddie Winter. Speaking on behalf of the special task force that has been assembled specifically to build a case against Winter, Captain Jonathan Widmark of the BPD said, After reviewing the evidence with our colleagues at the Bureau of Alcohol, Drugs, Tobacco, Firearms, and Lasers, it became clear that we were, in fact, wrong. What? Eddie Winter has indeed had a colorful history, but it is not a criminal history. By pursuing our case against Mr. Winter, we would simply continue to waste taxpayer dollars and even worse, condemn an innocent man. What kind of deal did they have going? We've heard all those tapes. Those tapes, I assume, were to be used to then bring in the other people in the crime family. So he was just allowed to walk free after all of that? Is that what I'm supposed to take away from this? It was an unexpected turn of events, to be sure. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. According to the Boston Bugle's confidential sources within the Boston Police Department, the innocent man was anything but. As uncovered by Captain Woodmark's official investigation, codenamed Operation Winter's End, Eddie Winter was involved in every crime imaginable, from petty larceny to first-degree murder. And although nothing was proved, everyone on Widmark's task force suspected Winter in the August homicide death of their lead detective's fiance, a Miss Jennifer Lands. Huh. Whatever the truth, it would appear the city of Boston has nothing more to fear from Eddie Winter. When approached for comment, the alleged crime boss could not be reached. In fact, his South Boston, his South Boston shub shop, that is a hell of a tongue twister, especially when you're half asleep, uh, has been shuttered, and his harborside residence completely cleaned out. Eddie Winter, it would seem, has disappeared. Well, that might be the case. China Showdown, the Atomic Ultimatum. Oh boy. By Mags, once again. War. Has there ever been an any extended period of time in recent memory in which soldiers have not fought, bled, and died 
all for the sake of furthering the political goals of one government or another? Uh, um, mm, mm, mm. No comment. <laughs> mm. The short answer is no. Mm. The longer, more terrifying answer is that we have not yet begun to experience the extent of human suffering. From Anchorage in frigid Alaska to Chantau on our enemy's doorstep. Or Chanteau? Ah, mm. The American troops have been embroiled in brutal battle. They have taken and lost many lives, a nearly uncountable number. But not entirely, because the truth is, the casualties have been countable. These conflicts, however horrible, have all been, in some inexplicable, perverted way, manageable. Through taxes and various wartime revenues, the United States government has been able to fund a standing army the likes of which this country has never seen before. The same is certainly true of our mortal foe, China. And with, and with each dollar spent comes a natural accounting of how that dollar was spent. Every bullet, every bunker-busting bomb, every body bag. Soon after each is used in the theater of war, we know every how, when, and where. But the sad, obvious truth is that the days of manageable war have nearly come to an end. In the minds of the world's great leaders, those billions of dollars haven't merely been spent, they've been wasted. Because here we are, after more than a decade of constant warfare, with no clear end and no clear winner in sight. So really, at this point, what other option do these superpowers have if not the nuclear one? And therein, of course, lies the rub. For when China or the, the United States launches its nuclear missiles, or Russia, and drops its atomic bombs, there will be no one left to count the casualties, let alone the ordnance. No one left to declare victory. So then only one question remains. Is there any way the powers of the world can prevent a nuclear apocalypse? If there is any hope left for the world, we must believe the answer is yes. But these are hopeless times. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it very much is. And this game was made prior. <laughs> prior to now. And fuck. <laughs> we didn't think it would change this thrill quickly, did we? Uh, no, not at all. Hmm. At this point, we're just reading through articles, but fuck it. By Buster Connolly, Boston food riots continue. Well, of course it does. <laughs> because, uh, if there's no food, people gonna get upset. That's just kind of how it works. In what can only be described as a scene of absolute pandemonium... On Friday afternoon, soldiers of the United States Army's 184th Infantry Regiment opened fire on a group of unarmed civilians after an unknown person smashed the plate glass window of the Roxbury Food Bank, prompting several people in the line outside to storm into the establishment. As of yesterday evening, at least four people were confirmed dead and eight others injured, but Jonathan Corman, spokesman for the Army, insists the troops acted within their authority. Right. The soldiers in question issued explicit verbal warnings several times. Those people knew exactly what would happen if they broke the line and attacked the food bank. Hunger is no excuse for civil disobedience. Yes, it is. Vandalism, or in this case, starting a riot that puts the lives of every civilian in the area at risk. Uh. It is the role of the United States Army to maintain order in this difficult time, and that is exactly what happened in this instance. I would also like to point out that the soldiers of the 184th Infantry Regiment have not had a food ration in two days. These men and women understand hunger probably better than anyone. Better is not the phrase you should be using.
as much would have been a better choice. If you wanted to convey, you know, a non-condescending tone. It is a response the American people have grown accustomed to, as violent scenes like this one in Roxbury have played out again and again across the country as a starving populace tries desperately to obtain food for its families. And, as has happened so many times in the past, civilian witnesses of the so-called riot tell a different tale. 85-year-old grandmother Hannah Henry was in line at the food bank and claims the soldiers had anything but order and liberty on their minds. They were laughing, joking about who they were going to shoot first. It was all a game to them. Those soldiers may not have fired on the crowd before that window got broke, but they was looking forward to it all the same. One can only hope that the violence in Roxbury will be the last such incident our country has to suffer through. But until America finds the strength to question its domestic, domestic, domestic policies and the food to feed its people, the future remains uncertain. Well, there's a good, easy, quick way to make sure you can feed your people by eliminating the majority of them a nuclear apocalypse. Yep, that'll do it. White House Remains Empty. Where is our president? By Max. Oh, boy. That's a question. Well, I guess no president is slightly worse than uh, mentally broken one. <laughs> For more than half a year, the West Wing of America's most famous residence has remained shrouded in near-complete darkness. A skeleton crew of manual laborers remains on staff to maintain the property, but nobody has lived or worked politically there for several months. And even though the White House press corps was unofficially and unceremoniously disbanded around the same time, the media has remained steadfast in answering that most important of questions. Where is our president? At first, the assumption was that the entirety of the United States government had moved operations to Raven Rock, Yeah, if you play Fallout 3, yeah. The Military Operations Center, located in the mountainous region of Pennsylvania, just a few miles northeast of the presidential retreat in, Cap in Camp David, Maryland. Uh, my fucking tongue is not cooperating with me today. But further investigations have revealed that neither the president nor his cabinet have been to the Raven Rock complex in over a year. <laughs> Eh. So if not Raven Rock, then where? Thanks to an extensive and exhaustive investigation, the Boston Bugle has uncovered the answer, and our readers will likely consider it as strange as it is shocking. The President has been leading our country from a Poseidon Energy oil rig just off the coast of San Francisco. That's right. The Poseidon oil rig was Fallout 1, and then they moved it to Raven Rock and Fallout 3. Forgot about that. <laughs> Forgot about that. It's certainly an odd choice for a presidential command center. Or is it? Not as much as it may seem, as our investigation discovered. Thanks to the testimony of a highly placed anonymous source, the Boston Bugle has learned that the official designation of the oil rig is actually Control Station Enclave giving credence to the long-running rumors of a secret militarized shadow government known as the Enclave that would take control of the United States in the event of a nuclear conflagration. Yep. And so the mystery of the missing president has finally been solved. But in doing so, has the Boston Bugle also uncovered evidence that the end of the world in the form of total atomic war is also at hand? Sadly, the president's silence seems to speak volumes. Yep, it does. Well, it's a shame these didn't get printed before the war actually hit. Because, man, man, would that have been calling it. Shit. Boston headed for its first World Series win since 1918. Oh, by Buster Connolly. Oh, man, it didn't even get its first series win since then. Oh, no. Fucking a century and a half and they never get their win. 
Oh, that sucks. At the same time, I mean, hey, this is like small fry shit in like the grand scheme of things, but fuck. Alright. As every resident of Boston is painfully aware, it has been 159 years since this city has reveled in the joy of a World Series victory. Whether from strikeout, error in the outfield, or a ball that rolls disastrously through an infielder's legs, defeat has remained our constant unwelcome companion. But not for long. And what has been one of the most exciting World Series races in decades, Boston has achieved a three games to none lead over the unbeatable Texas favorite, batting, fielding, and pitching. Whoa, whoa I misread that entirely. I'm fucked. His Texas favorite. Batting, fielding, and pitching have all aligned, thanks largely to the direction of legendary coach, uh, coach Dusty Wilder, giving this year's team the best chance they've had for victory in, well, forever. Woo! Fun! Huh. Man, I should really pay more attention. <laughs> Even more encouraging than Game 4 being played here in Boston is the fact that the team has yet to utilize their star pitcher, Matty the Missile Murtaugh. With him on the mound, some are actually predicting not only a series-shattering win, but a no-hitter to boot. Yes, for years, the concession stands of Boston has fed baseball fans a steady diet of beer, hot dogs, peanuts, and bitter defeat. But on Saturday, October 23rd, 2077... <laughs> The only thing that could snatch away victory is an act of God or some obscene calamity of man. <laughs> uh, it was both. It was both. Tomorrow, my friends, the unthinkable will finally come to pass, and life in Boston will never be the same again. So are you insinuating because the because the Boston team was so close to actually possibly winning the World Series, the bombs had to drop on the 23rd? Is that what you're insinuating, Bethesda? Is that what you're saying? Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> that was okay that was a good one <laughs> that was a good one alright I'm assuming that the, the computer here has the exact same articles so I'm just gonna bust through its uh, stuff real quick okay so uh, boy, that leaves me with a lot more options. Uh, feck. Um, just give me... Give me more tries, damn it. Give me more tries! You son of a bitch. Give me more tries. You shit. Come on! Give me more tries! Ah, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to find more tries, am I? No, no, I'm not. Shit. Okay, well, fuck me, I guess. Uh, no, fuck, I already used this. Shit, fuck, damn it. Alright. So, Potts has won. Hmm. Try done. Uh, so lies wouldn't be it. Try look. Yes. Hey, fuck yeah, did it. And just to double check, yep, it's all the same. It's all the same articles. Nothing changed. Okay. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Uh, okay, well, just doing another once-over just to make sure I didn't miss anything. 
And back up I go. And this time we go out this door. Because then I might be able to install the Mila and uh, finish the stupid quest that I'd set out to do in the first place. But I got sidetracked by reading news articles in a video game that aren't even real. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. There we are. Ah! Right there. Port back to Tinker Tom. Oh, hey! Kate, you're standing on the safe. You're standing on the thing. You're gonna make it a little difficult to open it. Just saying. It's mainly the power armor. Not that you're... No. no. Okay. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay. That's it. Cool. All the good stuff. Beautiful. Uh, anything good up here? Oh, of course she liked that. Okay. Whiskey. Whiskey bottle. Eh. Alright. Well, that's dealt with. This is precarious as hell because it's only being held there by a cinder block. Yeah. Could we move the chair on there too? Be enough weight to make me a little more comfortable about it. Alright. Okay. That does that. Since we're outside. Oh, boy. Oh, that's not good. Something over there is going crazy. Alright. Um, Boston Airport. That's, uh... That's where the broken stuff is. Okay, uh, let's head to the railroad. Actually, I'm going to end the episode here for right now. And we'll head to the railroad in the next one. And we'll see where that takes us. Eh? Sounds good to me. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one and only Stray Cat playing games and fucking reading gold news articles that aren't even real in a video game about nuclear post-apocalyptia and uh, the articles being just before the post-apocalypse starts. And uh, that's about it for you.